Okay, so I think we're ready to go. And with that, I'm just going to introduce our uh, opening skit. We're going to kick off the workshop with a low budget skit. So uh, take it away, Smutty Henry and Jimmy. Uh, nothing beats having over 100 puzzles to solve. Oh, hi there. I'm Smutty Henry. Don't worry, it's just a nickname. My real name is Harold. Um, Mr. Henry? Oh, hi there, Bobby. Uh, it's Jimmy. Uh, I'm curious as to why you're trying to solve a couple hundred puzzles all by yourself on a computer. Whoa there, Bobby. Slow down. I'm still trying to figure out if my name is an anagram for something. What? I'm taking part in the MIT mystery hunt. The MIT mi mis what's to read what? Oh, Bobby, you uninformed foil. The MIT mystery hunt is an annual event. That means it happens every year. But if you didn't know that, you might want to rethink participating. I did know that. Brag. You see, every year, the Friday before Martin Luther King Jr. Day, teams from all across the country prepare for the hunt to begin at 12 noon. They travel from all around, and some even play remotely. Well, this year, they'll all play remotely. But what could have happened is that teams would have met in person for the kickoff. Like at a football game? Yes, but with less COVID. This kickoff is the beginning of the hunt and usually involves a skit of some kind that introduces the theme for the hunt. The themes range all over, from video games to alternate history to musicals to The Wizard of Oz and even a trip to a theme park called Penny Park. Penny Park? That sounds out of this world! Hey, watch it, kid. The out of this world stuff got real played out by the astronaut. The, 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 the what astronaut? After the kickoff, the teams return to their home base and then get access to the first puzzles. This access is online as most puzzles are done on the computer. The goal is to solve individual puzzles that then unlock more puzzles, Bobby. Um, I'm still, I'm still Jimmy. Um, so teams don't get them all at once? That, that's not fair. Whoever said life is fair? <laughs> Certainly not whoever is running 2020. <laughs> anyway, those individual answers are used in a meta puzzle, and those answers are usually used in a meta meta puzzle. You'll hear more about this later from someone way smarter than me. And once the team has solved that, they would go on what is referred to as the runaround. Oh no, someone's gonna give us the runaround? That's right, Bobby. But this may be the first time the runaround is something you want to get. The first team to complete the runaround and find the coin will be the winner, and that team gets to create the hunt for the next year. Why, why are they looking for a coin? I've got a whole bunch right here in my pocket. Oh, Bobby, you obvious device to set up the reveal of information. The coin has taken various shapes and sizes over the years based on the theme. It all started when Brad Schaefer, an MIT PhD student back in 1981, hid an Indian head penny somewhere on campus and created puzzles leading teams to find it. Wow, what a great piece of historic knowledge, Mr. Henry. But Mr. Henry, what kinds of puzzles are there? Well, there can be anything. Anything? Yep. Uh, could you be a little more specific? Sure. You might see anagrams, cryptograms, number puzzles, multimedia puzzles, geometric puzzles, physical challenges, mystery trails, scavenger hunts, inter-team games. Really, anything is fair game. And oftentimes, the rules and instructions are non-existent. That sounds really hard. So it's just puzzles the whole time? Often there are scheduled events that happen throughout the weekend as well. These usually get teams out of their home bases and interacting with other teams. Who knows how this year will look? Not me. How long does this go on anyway? The hunt usually lasts around 48 hours, but it has run as long as 75 hours and as short as 18 hours, Bobby. Jimmy! It ended after 18 hours? No, of course not, Bobby. See, the hunt usually has an ending time if the coin was found before that time. So the hunt kept going. A team had just already found the coin while other teams continued solving. This all sounds so great. But how much do I have to pay? I only get 25 cents a week for my allowance. Oh, Bobby, participation in the MIT mystery hunt is free. But you will need a team and a good internet connection. How big should my team be? Size isn't important, Bobby. What? Anywhere from two to 200, kiddo. What, what now? Good luck. I think you're really gonna enjoy this, Bobby. Uh, uh, Jimmy, nah, never mind. Thank you, Mr. Henry. All right, thanks, guys.
Um, so now we move from our low budget skit to some talk about puzzles with Weihua and Todd. Hello, my name is Todd Etter. I uh, was the director of last year's Mystery Hunt, and I've been playing on Team Left Out since about 2009. Hi, I'm uh, Weihua Huang, and I've been hunting with Left Out for a decade and a half now, and I worked with the uh, Meta team and the Hint system for the 2020 hunt. So for this section, we're going to tell you a bit more about the types of puzzles you'll encounter during the MIT Mystery Hunt, walk through solving a sample puzzle, and we're going to teach you about meta puzzles. So let's start with what a puzzle hunt puzzle actually is. So mystery hunt puzzles and puzzle hunt puzzles in general don't have any fixed rules. But there are two properties they are almost always likely to have. One, you won't be given all the instructions to the puzzle. And two, the puzzle will solve to a simple word or phrase. So this makes it different than the puzzles that you might see other places, like say a crossword puzzle uh, or a Sudoku puzzle. And for those sorts of puzzles, everybody knows the instructions or can find them out very easily. Uh, for a crossword puzzle, you just solve the clues, you write the letters in the cells, one letter per cell going across or down. And at the end, you have a filled out grid, which you'll notice a filled out grid is not a simple word or phrase. Whereas in the mystery hunt, most of the puzzles you see, they're not going to have any instructions at all, which could seem pretty scary. But part of that enjoyment, it, part of the enjoyment of solving these puzzles, that's the process of figuring out what those instructions actually are. However, so you're not completely lost, there are some general motifs that you will see recur reoccurring more often than others. And so we're going to here try to teach you some of them so that you can recognize them. Right, thanks, Wewa. So uh, Smutty Henry talked about all sorts of different types of puzzles. Um, so what does a typical mystery hut puzzle look like? Well, it could be basically anything, but there are a couple of things that are consistent usually I say usually, most of the things we're going to say are going to have usually as a caveat because who knows what the rules are going to be this year. Uh, but a typical mystery hunt puzzle will have a title, uh, flavor text, some sort of descriptive text to kind of set the scene for the puzzle, and also the puzzle content itself and the data, the stuff you're actually trying to solve. Uh, now, the puzzle content data is obviously very important, but often the title and the flavor text will also have clues as to what to do. There are little breadcrumbs that the, the uh, constructor has left for you. So when looking at a puzzle, uh, there's some things that are very good to ask yourself because the temptation is often to dive right in and just start solving clues and filling in squares and stuff like that. But some things that will help you is to step back a little bit and ask yourself, could this possibly represent some real world group of things? These are all Norwegian curling teams, for example. Uh, also, is it an MIT located puzzle? Is it an MIT knowledge specific? No telling how many times I've spent hours on a puzzle only to be told by someone else, oh, these are all insignias from a dorm at, you know, at MIT or something like that. So there's a chance that there's this canonical set of things out there that you just don't know about. Um, look for starting hints or messages. Read the first letters of things. Look in the flavor text. Think about how you're going to get the answer. And often you can figure out how a puzzle is going to work without actually going into the nitty gritty of solving it. And finally, along the way, keep asking yourself, have I used everything? If there's an element of the puzzle that you haven't figured out how it fits in, then try to figure out how that works because that may be what's uh, getting you stuck on that. Finally, there is a great resource page on the Mystery Hunt main website for beginners and newbies and anyone really uh, with a couple of great links on different things about how to solve puzzles and have you tried things and so forth.